it's been a year since the last Section 7 where I first, you know, got my name out there. Um, and I wanted to go back again just because it was such a great event. And, you know, I had so much fun last time or last year. And I just wanted to, you know, get more reps in with the guys and, you know, try to figure out out, you know, the chemistry on the team and the roles and whatever before the season starts. My dad, funniest guy I've ever met, number one. He uh, was on TV for a while, um, and so he's just, a, he's a character. But as far as like helping me out, I think uh, he's like more involved in like the sports thing. He played football in high school, and he's my biggest supporter um, on the court and off the court. Um, like he's, he drives me everywhere makes us food every single night. He's the chef in the house. He's a fix-it man. He fixes everything in this house when it's broken. He, he's, he's a, yeah, he's a good guy. He, he definitely holds this place together. I was really cute. I was really, and I kept getting double, double, Rain where you'd make one, he'd make one, so I was literally being bombarded like by by missile fire of rain. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I took my uh, my whole sophomore year off, just training and training and training. So no one's seen me play for I'd say like a year and a half now, and uh, for me it's just uh, I'm coming out here to show show everybody what I've been working on and what I've accomplished throughout this time that I haven't been playing, so, yeah. Section 7 was a huge opportunity for Dusty, and, you know, my wife and I had no idea what it really meant to be there. And Dusty had been living in the tent in our backyard because my mom was living at the house at the time. She was immunocompromised. She was like 87 years old, and COVID had just happened. Everybody was kind of sp still spraying their groceries with bleach before we knew what was going on. So I bought a tent at REI ran an extension cord, you know, brought the TV out and, you know, kept going, isn't this great? It's like you're camping. And he'd be like, you know, I hate it out here. You know? But nonetheless, we kept him out there. And that just showed to me his sort of dedication to do whatever it took to continue to train and get better. So that summer was like a make it or break it scenario for Dusty, but he, he didn't know it really, and neither did we, because we were just like, thank God he's back playing again. I had the biggest chip, like I had the biggest chip on my shoulder that I've ever had, just 
knowing that I had to like show everyone um, what I've been working on for so long because no one knew and it sort of like was eating me alive like I was just like damn like I'm putting all this work and no one no one can see it like I mean you you saw like I was working my butt off and I think because he'd been working so hard and training with Paul at PJF Fitness and with Shay and his other trainer Ken the shooting coach I think you know, he just worked his ass off to get as good as he could because I real I think he realized he missed a whole year. We walk out for warm ups and I'm looking around. And there's literally like, fifth like sixty plus college coaches. Like everyone's there. Like it was insane. Like I'm looking around and I'm like, dang. Like if this if it's a time to show people like what I'm about, this is the time. And so the game starts and. I'm sort of just like in a zone from the jump, like, I, I don't know, I, there was some, something came over me, like I was just like, like different, there was a different mindset, like you can ask my parents about it, like even after the games that I had, it was like my demeanor was different. That night after the game was finally, it was when it was the recruitment part started like really, really picking up. It was overwhelming to be honest. It was sort of like surreal because I was getting, I was getting texts from these like colleges that I've like only dreamed of going to, you know what I mean? Man, he went to that tournament originally and just made every shot he took and all of a sudden all these, you know, you saw coaches like running to these games to see him play and after the first or second game, there was all this buzz. Like, I remember Kylan's dad came over to me and said, you know, hey, you know, he, it seems like uh, Dusty's over here trying to get the Kentucky offer, you know, and that, which was sort of a joke because everybody wants that offer. And sure enough, on the way home, we just started getting one call after another and my phone was blowing up and, you know, it was really exciting at that time. So, so he kind of proved himself and from that point forward, he was identified.
It was definitely, it was a lot different, just like how EYBL was this year. Um, it was a lot different and it's something that I'm still getting used to now is just getting used to like the eyes and you know the attention and, and, and whatnot and you know being able to perform you know every time you step out on the court just you know with that many people looking at you and watching you and, and it's really cool I mean it, for me it's like I remember being a kid and I was super into high school basketball as well so you know, seeing, watching guys like Marcus Levette and Marvin Bagley and all these guys that I was such a big fan of, like, when I was little, it's cool to see, you know, kids that, that I'm inspiring and, and uh, you know, it's, really, it's a really good feeling. So, so social media for the new high school athlete is overwhelm. It's an overwhelming presence that wasn't available two or three years ago. So um, now you're you're a kid that has a hundred thousand followers, and you know, like it's interesting for me because I used to walk through airports with my family, and people would come up and go, "Hey, you're the carpenter guy from the show," and hey, tell me about my trim on my living room wall, and I'm like. Not now, I'm with my family. Now I'm walking with my son and these little kids are coming up going, hey, you're the basketball guy. Hey, can I get a picture with you? And so now basically I just hold their cameras and shoot photos of my kid with some other person. It's really funny how, it, how that thing has transpired. And I think that there's a, there's a distraction component to the media aspect to it that is dangerous, that you can lose your focus and why you know, without the basketball at a certain point, none of this matters, unless you're just trying to be an influencer and not even be an athlete. So you do have to sort of manage. And I think from my experience with, with the entertainment business, you know, the hype ends and the quality of the work that you do is what lives on forever. So you better be good at what you do because that'll be the only thing that sustains ultimately, right? Your talent and you know how you present yourself to the world, either as the artist or the athlete that you're trying to become, right? The hype's gonna be f like fashion, you know. There's neckties go wide and then narrow, and then wide and then you know it changes every minute. There's something new. So as long as you keep working on that, that craft that you have, whether it be you're a singer, an actor, artist, or an athlete, you're good. But if you buy into the hype and all you're doing it for is to get the pictures. It'll die just like your career will.
Mercy was 10 for 14. Come on, man. We're like that. We're like that. The cool thing about a player like Dusty is at the very least he can go in and do the little things. At the very least he's going to grab you some rebounds that nobody else would have grabbed because he's so springy off the ground. He gets off the ground so quick. He has a good knack for where the ball is going to be. So even if he's not shooting great, he's still going to get you rebounds. He's still going to play very good defense because of his length and athleticism and quickness on ball. And so I, I'm seeing him guard from point guard all the way up to their center be able to put him on anybody. So like in that game, like he's not taking over offensively and they didn't need him to take over offensively, but he does all the other things, which is gonna make him fit in at the college level even better because he's not a guy that needs the ball. He doesn't need to get the ball and go ISO. He can do that, but he can fit in and, and play off ball. And so I think just more experience with that, you know, day in and day out, year after year, the more he experiences that, the better he's gonna get. Oh yeah, you you like can't get caught up on that switch. Good put back. Big guards do rebound, man. That's a great put back by Dusty Stromer.
called by Notre Dame. Chris Nowooli. Keenan Bay with the assist from Ryder Ellis. You're going to have bad games, you're going to have bad weeks. Grand scheme, at some of these guys at the NBA, you're going to have a bad year. Superstar players that I train, they'll have an entire year where they're just not shooting the ball well. Going through and playing these top teams and getting beat up and having your bad games and just knowing that that's basketball and you just bounce back over and over again. There's, just, there's nobody ever who has gone in and just breezed through. you know. And so for him, it's really just that experience of going and playing against these top teams day in and day out and um, just staying confident like a, he's a confident kid so he's gonna bounce back I don't think he's gonna get too down on himself um, but it just it you know it's gonna come with experience besides the loss like would you like for this event like what did you learn from it I mean like, what were you thankful for too? yeah I'm, I mean I was thankful for just for the opportunity to play again in that event because it's just it's so much fun there's so much opportunity you know, for guys who maybe aren't as well known, so many coaches there, and there's, you know, every year there's like a guy that'll go from nobody to a guy who has 10 offers. But, you know, I, we learned as a team, I feel like that you can't just win off talent. You gotta, you know, have structure and you gotta have chemistry and you can't just go out there and be the more talented team because, you know, the, the well-coached team is always gonna win. Um, so I think that's what I learned um, moving into the season. I know that if we get some more practices in and, and uh, you know, we have better chemistry, there's not a lot of teams that will be able to beat us. traditional guitar so that it's at the right angle see because if you're sitting like this it's a different feel but if you're sitting like this you can access all the fret right am I right Thank you. 